need your walls, as you told me, he emphasized the force to build the wall around Europe. Uh, it's just a continuation of the crisis. Just like it is impossible to extinguish fire with a fan, it is equally impossible to solve the debt crisis by creating new debt, which is what the EFSF is actually about. The only thing that will help is to face the truth. The only thing that uh, can help is that Greece must declare bankruptcy, which it actually did officially. Italy must start saving and introduce real reforms. And the rules set up by Eurozone and the establishment must finally, eventually, I should say, start being observed. It will hurt, but it's the only solution. And the discussion is whether it's not whether to try to save the Euro, but whether we are actually capable of implementing such solutions, which in one word means responsible policies in the Eurozone and countries. Just a um, quick background. What are the roots of the debt crisis? To make the euro currency work in several countries with quite different, quite varying uh, economies, it was required to establish some rules. These rules were not, were not observed, as we already heard. And moreover, the not, not observance of the established rules was never penalized. For example, the rule banning the entry to Eurozone to countries with sovereign debt exceeding 60% of GDP not observed right at the start. The reason it will go in, in spite of um, not observing this goal. In altogether, some of the Maastricht criteria for the stability and growth pact criteria were violated for 97 times altogether during the existence of uh, Eurozone, during the 10 years of existence of Eurozone. But no country has been ever penalized a single time. Germany and France even declared in 2004 that they will not observe the stability and growth bank criteria, which were basically their own criteria. <coughs> and then we know that uh, as a rule of the, one of the result of the not observing these rules, the debt crisis in Greece actually started because of the Europe. Greece would not be in such a debt if it would have its own currency, which would depreciate the increase in debt levels. That Greece would not be in such a big debt if uh, it would not have access to financial market as a, as a rate for loans at the same level as the German, for example, as a number of euros. So actually, the euro is the root of the problem. It's the root of the debt crisis. In a single word, the reasons for the debt crisis are the responsibilities politicians, politicians in Europe and politicians in countries like Greece. It's not actually the Fed Greek on the picture. It's these leaders who are responsible for the problems we have now in, in Europe. Many years of socialist culture, literal socialist culture, of both buying, both for me and I are going to research in pension and free health care, and everybody will get the internet for free, and whatever. The history of cheating on statistics, the history of not being the rules, in one word, the situation of moral hazard created by politicians who are the only responsible for the problems. And guess what now? The same people without the mandate received through elections. The same people are now working on the solutions to the problem. Mr. Barroso, former Prime Minister of Portugal, uh, a country which is now a candidate for bankruptcy. And the former Maoist, he has a good CV. The debt of Portugal skyrocketed under his uh, government, under his reign. And he is now at the leading the European Commission, and he is now offering solutions to the problems he calls personally responsible for causing them.
Lead pricing is too bad itself, but it's not that. Actually, all of the countries of the Eurozone can solve the debt crisis on their own. For example, in Greece, the government is running the money in almost everything. Waste collection companies are state out and government run, which uh, is something I consider personally too important to be done. <laughs> the government owns ports, the government in Greece owns utilities, the government owns railroads, with their employees receiving extra bonus incentives if they occasionally manage to run the trains on time. <laughs> well, the amount of tax we paid uh, by some political in Greece depends on the personal power toll once a year over a cup of coffee with the tax inspector. The Greek government employees have extremely generous pensions for self employed people, it's enough to work some uh, 2,500 days to have a minimum life in pay, guaranteed. And uh, very generous payments, including dozens of months of redundancy payments for bureaucrats. They have an army of 134,000 soldiers, a country of 10 million. And they have an estimated 100,000 bureaucrats more than necessary. So there is a lot of space for Greece to solve the problem for themselves. Take Italy. Italy, for example, has over 2,500 tons of gold, with a current value exceeding 100 million. Why are we talking about the crisis with Italy? They can just sell the gold. They can solve it themselves. But instead, politicians today are looking for themselves solutions. The real problems with the Eurozone appeared only in 2010 by another rule. The Article 125 of the Lisbon Treaty was violated. The Article 125 stipulates that every country must meet its own financial commitments. This rule has been evaded when Greece was granted the first law and violated by the establishment of the temporary European financial stability facility. Then, the ECB has violated another important rule. The ban on buying bonds from member states of the Eurozone and has bought Greek bonds at tens of billions of euros. It has evaded yet another rule, Article 123 of the Lisbon Treaty, that prohibits the ECB from lending to the member states. And uh, if it has not been enough, the changes of the temporary EFSF approved the line with the increase on the 21st July 2011 also represent a new violation of the rules. So what is actually happening? It's not just a problem of the Eurozone, but a paradigmatic change of the EU brought to us by foreign politicians and by unelected democrats. And meanwhile, what happened in Greece? The government spending in Greece rose by 1 billion a year on year. Deficit skyrocketed, prime ministers in several EU countries fell or are facing the division. And the Greeks are considering a referendum whether they are actually willing to generously accept what the EU under stress offers them. Why am I talking about Greece all the time? After the years of disrespect of indebtedness, Greece became actually the first country in troubles as a con consequence of the not fulfilling the rules. And the first country which is not really able to borrow refinancing on the normal interest rates in 2009. Normally such a government would be forced to save up and when it uh, is not able to go, it goes bankrupt. Except from Greece. European politicians and the ECB showed up and st uh, started to save the country. At first they claimed that uh, Greece can get out of its problems uh, on its on its own. Um, then they claimed that the increase needs 30 million euros, then they claimed uh, the amount necessary would be 60 million euros, and finally they ended up with a loan increase of 110 million euros. Um, then they claimed that the Greece needs 30 billion euros, then they claimed uh, the amount necessary would be 60 billion euros, and finally they ended up with a loan to Greece of 110 billion euros. Uh, they assured the European politicians that this loan would resolve everything and Greece would return on financial markets within a year. Slovakia did not participate in this loan. Uh, we refused in the parliament and we won this first fight and we saved the Slovak taxpayers some 820 million euros. 
Today, the experts of the Troika admit that Greece will need some 440 billion euros and will not return to financial markets before 2020. Why we have also refused to help Greece and Slovakia? Slovakia is a small country which has undergone major economic reforms. They were very costly over the period of the last 20 years. But we have implemented prudent fiscal policies. We have went through many structural reforms. We have privatized. Uh, maybe 1989, 100% of the of everything was government owned in Slovakia. Now it's less than 5%. The average pension in Slovakia is some 300 euros uh, compared to the Greece uh, 1600. The average monthly salary in Slovakia is the lowest in the eurozone if you compare with other countries. <laughs> then the EFSF came when uh, they found out that Slovakia can take, will not take part in the loan. Uh, the EFSF came as an idea. Because it came up to show that except for Greece, there are more countries with equally bad figures. Portugal, Ireland, Spain, and Italy, uh, they're called pigs. And what did the, the clever politicians in Brussels come up with? They came up with a temporary EFSF that should protect countries with irresponsible financial management. An economy by money of those who handle financial means responsibly. They promised it would only be temporary, lasting for three years. And they promised it would be based solely on guarantees. The EFSF, as an important rule, uh, said that loans offered by the EFSF should be compatible with debts of sustainability which basically means that only those countries should be entitled to receive loans from the EFSF uh, if there is a reasonable assumption of their capacity to repay this loan. Deep discussions about the setting up of the EFSF existed in many other countries of the Eurozone, including Germany, where the German FDP was originally opposing it. What is the main idea of uh, uh, the EFSF? My party's name is Freedom and Solidarity but the EFSF is a false solidarity. It's countries that adopted reforms and prudent fiscal policies are going to pay for the irresponsible. The EFSF means that the share of the little Slovakia would be among the highest compared to on GDP. Yet the Germans are probably going to pay the most. But remember the word. The share of Slovakia with GDP on the EFSF is the second highest of all uh, of the countries in the world. And remember the moral hazard. If such a situation, uh, as in Greece, happened in Germany, or I assume in Britain, if the country went into a debt crisis, I believe politicians who would uh, stand up and say, we need to save, would be actually elected. If in uh, the Southern Europe, if you stand up as a politician and say that we need to save, we need to cut the social benefits, and we need to cut the public spending, you are never going to. That's why the average lasting of a government in Italy is something like two years. Then the enhancement of the EFSF came. The original EFSF was approved across the European Union. However, after the enhancement, which was approved, and because of which the government of Slovakia fell, the EFSF not only violates all the principles of the Eurozone, but also the original principles of the EFSF itself. First, the enhanced EFSF turns the temporary euro ball into a permanent EFSF. Second, there, it is planning to provide loans to countries such as Greece with evident capacity, incapacity of its repayment. So the loans provided by the enhanced EFSF will not be compatible with that sustainability. Thirdly, the purpose of ESFS is being changed with the competence enhancement. Uh, EFSF as the subject of civil law would be now allowed to purchase bonds from the problematic countries and uh, will lend them before they are not able to finance themselves. Furthermore, uh, EFSF would be competent to grant loans to such countries where the bank sector fall into crisis, which modifies its very fundamental function. From helping the irresponsible countries where it's a good chance that they can be saved, like Ireland, for example, the EFSF will be now saving 
German and French banks who have bought and purchased and invested in Greek bonds. That's what actually happened in Europe. And that's why we said no to the enhanced EFSF. And it took two days after the fall of the cabinet when in Slovakia, with the help of the socialists, the FSF then was approved and we will now have snap elections, but we are still proud of it. We are still proud of it. One last One last comment on the enhancement of the EFSF and uh, what was uh, one of the main reasons why we voted against in the Slovak parliament. Uh, what you often hear is the word haircut, which means that um, uh, the countries will cut their debts or investors who have invested into green bonds with uh, interest rates and yields, a um, dozen percent, uh, will have to cut part of their investment. We lose some money because they have invested at a higher risk, so they have to lose. It's not a socialization of the losses. Everybody has to bear the profits, but also the losses. But actually the haircut within the enhanced EFSF is not real. Namely, in the case of Greece, what was approved at the time when we were voting for the enhancement of the EFSF. Commercial banks that invested into Greek debt based on its high risk and attractive yields would change half of their Greek bonds at the rate one to one for new Greek bonds with triple A rating. So when you have invested into Greek bonds, the junk bond, bonds, you have received the high profits for several months of years, and now they will change your bonds for a triple A bonds at the same nominal level. So you basically lose nothing. That's the first part of the haircut. Then the second half of the bonds would be changed for new bonds with a decrease in nominal value of 20%. So the nominal of the Greek debt would fall by 20%. However, hand in hand with guaranteed yields, well above the interest rates of other AAA instruments, namely 6.8% compared to some 3% yields for German bonds. And these would be guaranteed for a period of 15 to 30 years. So basically, the haircut would be given back the 20% of no haircut after 15 years in the form of higher yields on the bonds. So this is what the European Commission declares as a bankruptcy or as a haircut. The Greek debt. It's it's not haircut. It's actually treasure. So what will be next? I'm sure there will be many other speakers today who will be talking about the future of the euro. There are a few of the worst scenarios on the illustration. Just my last couple of words. I understand that Slovakia is a small country, but there is no need even for us as a small country to be over survived and not a bit self confident. I agree with the statement that uh, this is not longer about Greece. At this time, under the pretense of saving the euro, the central European government is actually being established. Apart from the common currency, we will have common debts, we will have common taxes, and we will keep minimum national competences in the midterm horizon. You know, Comic Con was nothing compared to what is up to come. This is not the same Eurozone that we entered in 2009. In case of Slovakia, the participation in the EFSF could significantly increase the debt of our country because the amount we are putting into the EFSF to save the fat Greek peak is 1.5 multiple of our annual state budget. And uh, there is little or no chance that this, was actually, this would actually solve the problems of the highly indebted countries and force them to implement conservative fiscal policies or structural reforms. No. So this is an icon of trust. We are on the way to economic circle. And the only way that we can do is uh, to try to explain and uh, try to fight for become a shining example of cutting inefficient public spending and bringing fiscal responsibility. That's the only sustainable way to prevent another debt crisis in the future. Any other policies create unacceptable moral hazard that could ruin the whole European project. What we have done in Slovakia and what has really made our coalition former coalition partners upset was that we have distributed this kind of brochure about the EFSI, explaining what it actually is. 
in hundreds of thousands of copies across the country. And I have brought some 100 reprints in English to you uh, that you can freely take. And uh, the only chance that we have, or we believe that even some European politicians will read it and <laughs> will try to understand. Thank you very much. inflation in Europe. It wasn't before. So we have highest inflation. inflation. The prices are rocketing. Even middle class are thinking uh, what they have to buy or not. Uh, so the first thing uh, is uh, insisting uh, what, what was real. And the second example you gave about Italy, yes. Uh, Estonia got uh, from England, by the way, who kept Estonia gold, gold reserves 50 years during the occupation years in English bank and we got it back to uh, 91, yes? Now we have uh, 200 kilograms of gold reserves and we have must guarantee Italy with the three, Italy, Greek and others with the three billion, uh, uh, two billion euros, yes? Uh, it's quite the reason, isn't that? 2,000, uh, over 2,000 tons of gold in Italy 200 kilograms in Estonia, we have to guarantee them. So the, only these two examples, and my question is uh, about uh, what happened with your prices, inflation after joining, uh, uh, is it comparable? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the price effect is, as I mentioned, it's called Balas Samuelson effect, which means that uh, when your price levels are lower than the average in the Eurozone, uh, they can grow through inflation or through uh, the exchange uh, rate. And once you get rid of the exchange rate, it means the inflation will be higher than it would be without. Slovakia had the luck of implementing the luck of implementing the euro during the economic crisis, which actually has uh, pushed prices down. So we didn't see a real immediate effect but we are going through a period of higher uh, inflation than expected right now. And the assumptions of Slovak economists are that the inflation will be two percentage points higher every year for the next dozen years than it would be without having the euro. 